So we'll go with the questions of coordination compounds. The first question is which of the following statement is correct about coordination compounds? Options given are option A primary valency is non-ionizable and secondary valency is ionizable. Option B both primary and secondary valencies are ionizable. Option C primary valency is ionizable while secondary valency is non-ionizable and option D both primary and secondary valencies are non-ionizable. The correct answer here is option C primary valency is ionizable while secondary valency is non-ionizable. These are the postulates of Werner's theory. Next when we see question number 2. So question number 2 is when one mole of CrCl3 dot 6 H2O is treated with excess of AgNO3, 3 moles of AgCl are obtained. The formula of the complex is, so Cl which is present with a coordination sphere or a coordination entity is non-ionizable. The one which acts as a counter ion will be ionizable. That means these three Cl are not present within the coordination sphere. They are present outside. So when we look at the options where three Cl are present outside the coordination sphere, it is option D. So correct answer is option D where we see that Cl is a counter ion which can be ionized. H2O acts as a league and chromium is a metal. So the correct coordination formula, sorry the complex formula is CrH2O6 and Cl3 where Cl3 acts as a counter ion and can be precipitated by adding AgNO3 as AgCl. Next question number 3. The correct IUPAC name of PtNH3 twice Cl2 is? So when you write the IUPAC name of the complex, we write in alphabetical order first the name of the ligand followed by the name of the metal. If your complex is positively charged or neutral, the name of the metal remains as it is. But if it is negatively charged, the name ends with the letter A T E. So if you consider here, there is no overall, there is no counter ion, no overall charge on the complex. That means it is a neutral complex. The metal here present is platinum. The ligands present are amine. Ammonia is named as amine, spelt as A double M I N E, and Cl. Cl is named as chlorido. And oxidation state of the metal has to be represented at the end in terms of Roman number. So to calculate the oxidation state, we'll consider the oxidation state of platinum as X plus. Ammonia has no charge onto it. It's a neutral ligand. So directly we can write it as 0 plus. There are two Cl and Cl is a negatively charged ion. So here minus 1. Overall on the complex there is no charge. So it is equal to 0. So what remains is x minus 2 equal to 0. So x becomes equal to plus 2. Hence the oxidation state of the metal is plus 2. Thus, the correct IUPAC name is, there are two amines, so diamine, dichlorido, it's a neutral complex, so platinum, oxidation state of the metal is 2, so Roman number 2. So, if we find here, Roman number 2 is with the first one, so what is the correct IUPAC name is, diamine, dichlorido, platinum, Roman number 2, this is the correct IUPAC name of the complex. Next, chelating effect is... So option A, so we have already discussed about chelates. Chelates are nothing but the ring-like structures formed due to the polydentate ligand which have two or more donor atoms. So here we say that chelating ligands form rings like this. Obviously they form ring-like structure with the central metal ion. Chelating ligand form stable complexes than monodentate ligand. Yes, chelating ligand form more stable complex. They are stabilized by the ring-like structures. Chelating ligands are attracted to the central metal ion through coordinate bonds. Yes, in a coordination compound, they are do for, they do form coordinate bond. And option four is all of this. So all of these explain the chelating effect. So correct answer is option D. All of this. Next question number five: the stabilization of coordination compounds due to chelation is called chelate effect. Which of the following is the most stable? 
complex species so if you look here co co is a monodentate ligand it cannot form a ring like structure cn is a monodentate ligand it cannot form a ring like structure oxalato is a didentate ligand so it can form a ring like structure for example if we have a fe oxalato can form a bond on one side then we can represent it here on the another side as well as here on the another side so it is forming a ring like structure with overall charge 3 minus hence this can be considered as a stable complex h2o is also a monodentate ligand so it will also not form a stable complex so among this the stabilization due to coordination compound due to chelation is called chelate effect and this complex that is option c is the better example for the stable complex and option c is the correct answer next question number 6 which of the following complexes is homoleptic so if we see the following complexes homoleptic means having same type of ligand so if you see option 1 ammonia is the only ligand present hence it is homoleptic option a is homoleptic option b if you see you have ammonia as well as chlorido hence it is heteroleptic complex option c you have water and carbon monoxide it is also heteroleptic complex option d you have amine that is ammonia and nitrito it is having two different ligands so it is also a heteroleptic complex so all these three have different types of ligand hence they are heteroleptic complexes and the first one has only one kind of ligand hence it is called as a homoleptic complex next if we consider question number if we consider question number 7 which of the following <coughs> complexes is a outer orbital complex so to find out an outer orbital complex we'll consider these complexes and then we will identify which is an outer orbital complex so if you consider here the first one the first option given here is co nh3 six overall charge here is 3 plus so your central atom is co with the plus 3 charge and your ligand is nh3 remember nh3 is a strong ligand co atomic number is 27 when it is in plus 3 oxidation state its outer shell electronic configuration becomes 3d6 so when we represent that 3d6 configuration so 1 2 3 4 5 so 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 now here since nh3 is a stronger ligand pairing of electrons will occur that is what we study in valence bond theory and the same if you study in crystal field theory we study that it splits into two different levels when it forms a octahedral complex one will be t2g another will be eg t2g has lower energy so then that of the average d orbital and eg has higher energy so when it is a strong ligand since the gap between this two is more so t2g is filled first followed by eg so we can fill this electrons as totally six electrons so 1 2 3 instead of going into eg orbital we we are left with those in t2g only and thus this is why we say pairing of electrons occur and these two are empty so it will use those d orbitals and it will undergo d2 sp3 hybridization so it is emptying or you can say it is using inner d orbital thus it is not a outer orbital complex similarly if you see the next example we are having here as mn c next option sorry mn cn6 minus 4 here if you calculate the oxidation state of mn mn is in plus 2 oxidation state and in plus 2 oxidation state it is having 3d5 configuration the same thing if we consider here we know cn minus is a strong ligand again so if it is a strong ligand what we say the distance the distance between eg and t2g is greater so here if you consider t2g 1 2 3 4 5 sorry 3 t2g and 2 eg now when we fill the electrons 1 2 3 
4 and 5 so still you have 2 d orbitals available for hybridization so it will also use inner d orbital and hence it is not an outer orbital complex if we consider the next option the next option given is fe cn6 minus 4 here fe is in plus 2 oxidation state and when fe is in plus 2 oxidation state its oxidation state is all its uh, electronic configuration is also 3d6 and if it is 3d6 already we have seen that it will fill the t2g orbital completely 2 will be empty which will be available for hybridization and hence this also will undergo which hybridization d2 sp3 hybridization and the last option what is given is ni nh3 6 2 plus so ni nh3 6 2 plus here ni is in plus 2 oxidation state its electronic configuration is 3d8 and when its electronic configuration is 3d8 we'll see again according to crystal field theory so 1 2 3 4 5 see nh3 is also a strong ligand in valence point theory we study that pairing of electrons occur why that pairing of electrons occur is explained here by crystal field theory so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 if pairing would occur one would go here and one would be empty but here we see that in case of nickel this is not empty and we need two d orbitals for an octahedral geometry whenever the coordination number is 6 it has octahedral geometry and we need two empty d orbital here even if pairing would occur one would be empty but pairing does not occur which is explained based on which theory again crystal field theory as we say that it splits into two different orbital so here we see that one will be eg another will be t2g first the electrons enter into t2g so eight electrons are there one two three four five six 7 and then 8 so pairing does not occur here so that is why there is no empty d orbital inner d orbital and when it does not have empty inner d orbital obviously it will use outer d orbital so instead of 3d orbital it will use 4s 4p and 4d orbital and undergo sp 3d2 hybridization and it will result in the formation of outer orbital complex and thus we say that the correct answer for this question which of the following complex is the outer orbital complex is option d that is ni nh362 plus next if we consider question number 8 which of the following is a neutral complex so first one they have given cocl3 nh3 thrice so within the complex the molecular formula is written outside the complex there is no charge so this becomes a neutral complex second if you look here this is given first followed by a counter ion means complex is having positive charge counter ion is having negative charge so it is an cationic complex option c here also the same thing first complex is given then next they have given a uh, counter ion that means this is positively charged hence it is also a cationic complex and option d all of the above so the correct answer as per the question asked which is a neutral complex answer is option a next question number nine indicate the complex which shows geometrical isomerism to exhibit geometrical isomerism either the complex the complex should be either tetrahedral or it should be an octahedral complex tetrahedral complex with two different ligand in equal amount that is uh, if it is pt nh3 twice it should be cl2 but there are three ammonia and one cl so it is not forming a geometrical isomer here if you see two different ligands is a necessary condition here we are having the same ligand so this is also not forming this is also not forming we are left with the first option which is octahedral with two different ligand so it will form and geometrical isomer like cis and trans which we can represent in the following manner if it is cis isomer cl and cl will be present exactly opposite to each other and h2o will be present on one side so this becomes cis isomer and similarly if we want to represent a trans isomer chromium cl and cl will be exactly opposite and h2o will be exactly opposite to each other so the correct answer for question number nine is option a then next 
the CFSE that is crystal field stabilization energy for octahedral complex is 18,000 per centimeter. The crystal field stabilization energy for tetrahedral will be. So for tetrahedral complex, the octahedral crystal field splitting energy is equal to 4 by, sorry, for tetrahedral, it is equal to 4 by 9 times of octahedral. So if you calculate here, 4 by 9 into 18,000 per centimeter, 9 ones are, 9 twos are, 1, 2, 3 zeros, 4 twos are 8, 8,000 per centimeter. So the correct answer is option C, 8,000 per centimeter. Next, question number 11. Due to the presence of ambidentate ligand, coordination compounds show isomerism. Palladium complexes of the type PDC6H5SCN2 and PDC6H5NCS2 are. So here if you see, both have same molecular formula, same types of ligand, but the donor atom in ligand are different. Here sulfur is a donor atom, here nitrogen is a donor atom and this becomes an ambidentate ligand and the isomers which have ambidentate ligand are called as linkage isomers. Hence the correct answer is option A, linkage isomers and the phenomenon we call it as linkage isomerism. Next, question number 12. In coordination compounds, a ligand has a lone pair of electrons, is attached to the central metal ion through a coordinate bond, satisfy the secondary valency, all of this. So all these are correct. A ligand should have a lone pair. It will donate that lone pair and form a coordinate bond and it will also satisfy the secondary valency. Hence, all of these are the correct answers. Next. Which one of the following ligand form a chelate ring? So chelate ring means it cannot be a monodentate ligand. It should be a bidentate or more than two donor atoms should be present. So if you consider acetate, acetate ion has only one donor site. Hence it cannot form a chelating ligand. If you consider oxalate, oxalate C double bond OO minus C double bond OO minus. It is having two donor sites so it can form a ring like structure so it becomes a key, uh, chelating ligand which forms a ring like structure. Cyanide ion also has one donor atom so it also cannot form a ring like structure. Ammonia can donate only a one lone pair of electron hence it also cannot form a ring like structure. So the correct answer is option B oxalato. So oxalato or oxalate ligand forms a chelate ring. Then question number 14, the number of Cl2 atoms acting as ligand in the complex. So the one which is present within the coordination sphere is a ligand and the one which is present outside the coordination sphere we call it as a counter ion. So the correct answer here is 1 and that is option A, 1. Next, the coordination number of a complex compound is equal to the number of monodentic ligands attached to the central metal ion, the primary valency of the central metal ion, effective atomic number of central metal ion, the oxidation number of central metal ion. So the coordination number of a complex is equal to the number of monodentic ligands attached to the central metal ion based on the number of ligands attached or the number of coordinate bonds formed we define the coordination number of a complex. So the correct answer is option A. The next question, question number 16. Which of the following does not give precipitate of AgCl with an excess of AgNO3 solution? So if you see option A, these three Cl are present outside. That means they are ionizable and three moles of AgCl is precipitated with AgNO3 solution. If we go with option B, Cl2, two moles of AgCl is precipitated with AgNO3 solution. Option C, 1 mole of AgCl is precipitated with AgNO3 solution and here if you see this is present within the coordination sphere thus it is not ionizable and it will not form the precipitate of AgCl and hence the correct answer for question 16 is option D that it will not give a precipitate of AgCl. Next question number 17. A strong ligand gives a complex which is generally called. So if it is a strong ligand, we see pairing of react, uh, electrons will occur and it forms a low spin complex. So correct answer is option A. For a weak field ligand, it forms a high spin complex. So question number 17, correct answer is option A. 
Next question number 18. The complex ions COnH3 5NO2 2 plus and COnH3 5NO2 plus are called. So here also if you see they have same molecular formula, same ligands but the donor atoms are different. Here the donor atom is nitrogen. Here the donor atom is oxygen and hence they are having ambidentic ligand. And if they have ambidentate ligand, we say that they are nothing but linkage isomer and the phenomenon is linkage isomerism. So the correct answer is option B, linkage isomers. Then question number 19, the compound CrH2O6Cl3, CrH2O5ClCl2 dot H2O and CrH2O4Cl2Cl dot 2H2O represent. So if you look at these three compounds, it is having 1 chromium, 6 water, 3 chlorides. Here also 1 chromium totally 5 plus 1, 6 water, 3 chloride. Here also if you see 1 chromium, 4 plus 2, 6 water, 2 plus 1, 3 chloride. That means they have same molecular formula, but they differ in the number of water molecules present within the sphere and outside the sphere. And such type of isomers, we either call them as solvate isomers or we also call them as hydrate isomers and the phenomenon we call it as solvate isomerism or hydrate isomerism. Hence the correct answer for question number 19 is option C, hydrate isomer. Next question number 20, the number of geometrical isomers for PT, NH3 2, Cl2 is. So for question number 20, the correct answer is two that is two isomers are possible so here geometrical isomers are of two types one is a cis another is trans isomerism so this will exhibit cis and trans isomerism means two isomers are possible so correct answer for question 20 is option a next which of these following hybridizations has planar geometry so yes p3 the hybridization has trigonal pyramidal geometry is sorry trigonal bipyramidal geometry dsp3 also has trigonal bipyramidal geometry dsp2 has a square planar geometry sp3 has tetrahedral so the planar geometry is exhibited by dsp2 type of hybridization hence the correct answer is option c next question number 22 which of the following complexes has sp3 D2 hybridization. So here you should remember the concept of strong ligand and weak ligand. If it is a strong field ligand, it will use inner D orbital and it will undergo D2 sp3 hybridization. And if it is a weak field ligand, it will use outer D orbital and it will undergo sp3 D2 hybridization. So here NH3 is a strong ligand. And chromium, here in chromium, we see electronic configuration in plus 3 oxidation state. Chromium Cr3 plus, chromium is in plus 3 oxidation state. Generally, electronic configuration of chromium is 3D5, 4S1. Removal of 3 electron, you get it as 3D3. So, D orbitals are available for hybridization. Similarly, if you consider Fe Cn6, 3 minus, here you are having Fe in plus 3 oxidation state. Electronic configuration is 3D5. When pairing of electrons occur, 2D orbitals will be empty because it is a strong field ligand and hence it will also undergo D2 sp3 hybridization. This also will undergo D2 sp3 hybridization. Similarly, here also it will undergo D2 sp3 hybridization. But when you consider F, F is a weak field ligand. Cobalt is in plus 3 oxidation state with the electronic configuration as 3D6. So here, inner orbitals will not be empty so it will use outer orbital and it will undergo sp3 d2 hybridization so the correct answer here is option d so for question number 22 the correct answer is option d sp3 d2 hybridization next question number 23 the iupac name of k3 co no 26 is so k3 is written first means we have to name the uh, counter ion first that is potassium then followed by the complex. In the complex, we name the ligand first. There are 6 NO2. So it becomes hexa nitrito. Then we have cobalt written later. So here complex is having negative charge. Hence the name of the metal becomes cobaltate. And oxidation state of the metal is plus 3. So here we write Roman number 3. And the correct IUPAC name is 
potassium hexanitrito cobalt 83 which is given as option D that is potassium hexanitrito cobalt 83. Next which of the following has magnesium so you should know that magnesium is present in chlorophyll in hemoglobin we are having iron and in carbonic anhydrase we are having zinc in vitamin B12 we are having cobalt. Next, the hardness of water is measured by, so here options given are conductivity method, distillation method, EDTA method, all of the above. So remember, hardness of water is measured by forming a complex of calcium and magnesium ion with EDTA. So the correct answer is EDTA method. Which one of the following complexes is expected to be paramagnetic? So we say it to be paramagnetic. Next question number 26. Which of the following complexes is expected to be paramagnetic? We say that it is paramagnetic if the complex has an unpaired electron. And to find out this unpaired electron, we will consider here. So already here I have solved the hybridization. So if you look, NiCO4, nickel is in plus 2 oxidation state here. Sorry, nickel is in 0 oxidation state here. So, its electronic configuration is 3D8 to 4S2 and here if you consider pairing of electrons occur as it is a strong ligand. So, empty orbital are S and P. It will undergo sp3 hybridization. There is no unpaired electron in D orbital. Hence, it is diamagnetic in nature. Similarly, if you go with the next option CONH36 Cl3. Here cobalt is in plus 3 oxidation state, 3D6 configuration, NH3 is a strong ligand, pairing of electrons occur, it empties the D orbital and it undergoes D2 sp3 hybridization. There is no unpaired electron in D orbital, hence even this is also diamagnetic in nature. Similarly, if you consider the next one, so here if you consider the next option, NiH2O6, Cl2, here Ni is in plus 2 oxidation state, 3D8 configuration, D, con D orbital, you have these electrons and here if you see, you have one unpaired electron here, another unpaired electron here, so you are having two unpaired electron and due to the absence of empty D orbital, it uses outer d orbital and it undergoes sp3 d2 hybridization and since it has two unpaired electron we can say that it is paramagnetic in nature then option d zn nh3 four times so4 zn is in plus two oxidation state its electronic configuration is 3d10 it is undergoing sp3 hybridization zn has all the electrons filled in d orbital all are paired so it is also diamagnetic in nature. So which is paramagnetic is NiH2O6 Cl2. Hence the correct option for question number 26 is option C NiH2O6 Cl2. Next question number 27. The compounds COSO4 NH35Br and COSO4 NH35Cl represent. So if you look both are having different molecular formula. The main condition of isomerism is that both should have same molecular formula. Here the counter ion is Br, here the counter ion is Cl. So they do not form any kind of isomerism. Hence the correct option for question number 27 is D, no isomerism. Next question number 28, a chelating agent has two or more than two donor atoms to bind to the single metal ion. Which of the following is not a chelating agent? So here if you look thiosulfato, the formula is SCN minus, oxalato C2O4 minus, glycinato, it also has two donor sites, ethane 1,2 diamine, it also has two donor sites, oxalato has two donor sites, thiosulfato has one donor site. Hence, since it is a monodentate ligand, it cannot act as a chelating ligand so for question number 28. The correct answer is option A which is not a chelating ligand as it has only a single donor site. Next, which of the following species is not expected to be a ligand? To be a ligand, a necessary condition is that it should have the ability to donate an electron pair. So, NO can donate an electron pair. NH4 plus is a positive ion which cannot donate an electron pair. Hence, this cannot act as a ligand. 
NH2CH2CH2 NH2 that is ethene 1 comma 2 diamine nitrogen has lone pair of electron it is also electron pair donor so it is it can act as a ligand carbon monoxide can also act as a ligand so which cannot act as a ligand is option B NH4 plus and hence it is the correct answer next what kind of isomerism exists between CrH2O6 Cl3 which is violet in color and CrH2O5 Cl Cl2 dot H2 which is grayish green in color so if you look at both both have same molecular formula but they differ in the number of water molecules present within the coordination sphere and outside here within you have six here you have within five plus one six outside so both have same molecular formula but due to the difference in the ligand and the, that is difference in the ligand within the coordination sphere and outside the coordination sphere their color varies such type of isomerism we call it as solvate or hydrate isomerism and Hence, the correct answer is option B, solvate isomerism. Next, last question. IUPAC name of PTNH3 twice ClNO2 is. So, whenever you write the IUPAC name, as I have said you, first we write the name of the ligand, followed by the name of the metal and then the oxidation state of the metal. So, here NH3 is amine, two are there, so diamine, one Cl, so chlorido, and here you are having NO2 means nitrito N. Then oxidation state of platinum, we take it as X, NH3 as 0, Cl as minus 1, nitrate also as minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, 2. So here X minus 2 equal to 0, X becomes equal to plus 2. So oxidation state of platinum is a plus 2. So the IUPAC name of this will be and complex is neutral. So the name of the metal remains as it is, as platinum. So the IUPAC name of this would be diamine. Chlorido nitrito yun platinum 2. So diamine chlorido nitrito yun platinum 2. So option C is the correct answer for question number 31. So with this we have solved few of the multiple choice questions which are important for your board exam. Prepare well for your exams. Thank you for watching. All the best.